this is mine He's been my fourth man in the fire Time after time Born of His Spirit Washing His blood And what He did for me on Calvary Is more than enough I trust in God My Savior Perfect submission And all is at rest I know the author of tomorrow Has ordered my steps So this is my story this is my song Praising my risen King and Savior All the day long So I trust in God My Savior The one who will never fail He will never
Uh, today is the day of prim. Is that right? Yes. Yes? Let's stand to our feet and get ready to worship. Prim. 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 Okay. So um, to, to celebrate the day, uh, I would like to read you guys the, from Book of Esther, uh, Chapter 9. So, yeah, Book of Esther, see? It's effortless. I got a book already. So <laughs> let's go. Uh, Mordecai recorded these events, and he sent letters to all the Jews throughout the province of uh, King Xerxes, near and far, to have them celebrate annually the 14th and 15th day of the month of uh, Adar as the time when the Jews got relief from their enemies, and as the month when their sorrow was turned into joy and their mourning into a day of celebration. He wrote them to observe the days as days of feasting and joy and giving presents of food to one another and gifts to the poor. Come again, this is the day their sorrow was turned into joy. Can we, can we say it together? Sorrow turned into joy. And morning turned into the day of celebration. Morning turned into day of celebration. When, um, when I'm praying for this, uh, one, one thing is really, really clear right there is the morning ends right now. Whatever situation that you have been <sighs> suffer and endured and unai about, it ends today. You know, for Asian people, somehow, okay, I'm not going to do Asian thing there. <laughs> so, um, okay. <laughs> As for like my mom and my dad, Taiwanese, how's that? <laughs> no, easier. So I, I really see how enduring they can be. You know, for things they can just do over and over again. You know, when they're having trouble, they normally wouldn't really speak out. You know, they can't really just push it through. However, there is Father God. There is Father God. Yes, we can do our best to a certain extent. But there is God. And this is what God is saying. Even though we, you have your plan B prepared, the sorrow ends. The mourning ends. It doesn't matter how we see it. It ends today. Let's pray. Father, we are going to take your words for it. Disregard our own risk management procedure. Father, you have the last say. From the beginning to the end, you have the last say. And when you say that our sorrow is going to turn into joy, Father, we are going to receive it as it is. And Daddy, we thank you. We thank you that you are always wonderful. Beyond our imagination. Sometimes hard to, hard to understand, but Daddy, you are always good. You are always good. And so in you, we get to sing, we get to dance, and we get to be as your children once again. I pray that, Lord Jesus. Amen.
great joy of what you've conquered for us. Yes. About this moment, can we just spend some time to turn our eyes, turn our soul, and turn our spirit to the Lord. You may feel free to open your mouth to sing the melodies. If you feel like you're not ready, it's okay. Just to open your mouth. Pray for the Lord to help you. Turn my heart 
is too long We turn our eyes to you, Jesus We welcome you in this room We know you're here when we're asked for more Lord, we're asking for more of your presence in this room
victory of the Lord again. It's in your mouth, it's in your town. Whatever you declare, whatever you say, whatever you sing matters. It matters.
to hear what you want to do We see
there's no coincidence in kingdom. Today, you are standing here because you are standing for your nation and you are shouting for your nation. It doesn't matter where you come from, but this is the song we're going to sing together. You guys ready? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every time, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor. Matthew 21 9 Hosanna to the son of David blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest which was a fulfillment of the prophecy said in Zechariah 9 9 rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout aloud O daughter of Jerusalem behold your king is coming to you righteous and having salvation is he humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, and foal of a donkey. The hope that we speak and we sing about this morning is our risen Saviour, Jesus Christ. And I don't know what you've been going through in this season of your life. Maybe you're dealing with very difficult situations. And in fact, we have some different prayer requests this morning of people that are asking for different things, for breakthrough about different things. But this morning, the reason we raise a hallelujah and we sing hallelujah is because we worship a risen King, right? And so this morning, no matter what it is that you're going through, no matter what situation you're dealing with, maybe you're looking for a breakthrough for your nation. We're looking for a breakthrough for revival in Taiwan these 21 days of prayer and fasting. That's what we want to see. We want to see salvation. Maybe you're the only believer in your family here in Taiwan or even abroad. And you want to see breakthrough and people come to know Christ in your family. But what is it? Maybe you need healing in your body this morning. What is it that you are bringing before the Lord this morning as you're in this house? Maybe you're dealing with the valley in your life. Or maybe God has brought a breakthrough and you're just praising Him. But no matter whether you're in the valley or the mountaintop, we have the privilege to come together as brothers and sisters to praise God this morning. To praise Him. So right now, just where you are, I want you to find your neighbor. Maybe two, three people together. What is it that you need prayer for this morning? What is it that you need a breakthrough this morning? Maybe in your family, in your circumstances at work, just two or three people together. Let's pray for one another this morning. If you're, if you're uh, not new to Bali, you're Bali, been here for a while, find someone that looks a little lost and say, hey, I'm going to pray with you this morning. It's my honor and privilege to pray with you this morning. So right now, two or three people together, just share what is it that you need prayer and breakthrough for this morning that you want to continue to bring before the Lord? I'll also ask just for the prayer request to come up on the board. We 
can also pray for our congregation, those in our congregation that are looking for breakthrough in the following areas. salvation of God. Stand firmly on the Word of God this morning. Stand firmly on His promises to each one of us. Stand firmly being led by His Spirit to know that you have been created to overcome because of the blood of the Lamb. You can sing hallelujah this morning. So let's respond and declare this together and praise our Lord, the King of Kings. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, on the blood of Christ we stand. Every tribe, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the One more time. By your blood, we stand here today, firmly grounded, firmly secure because of you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
just right now, where you're standing, just give your praise to Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. By your blood, we stand for it. Giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Lord, we thank you for the honor of being able to praise and worship you today. We pray that you continue to speak to us through your word and through your spirit this morning. We are here because of you. We worship you. You are worthy of all honor and all praise. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God all the glory this morning. Just before you sit down, turn to your neighbor, says, great to worship you this morning as family of God. You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Thank you. Right now, our children ministry is about to get started on the second floor. So if there are any young ones amongst us, yeah, I see them waving, bye, mom, bye, dad, see you later. Just over here. <laughs> Heading up to the second floor. Have a great time, guys. All right. Right now, we're going to have a time of connecting, even though I know there was a, a big hum going on while you're praying for one another. But we want to give you the opportunity, especially if you're new amongst us this morning, to connect with one another. So let's warmly welcome Johan as she leads us in the time of connection. Welcome, Johan. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today's a victorious day. Hallelujah. Um, so welcome to Bali. Welcome home. This is a place where we call home. This is a place where we, want, uh, we are connected to each other. So with that, our connect question for this morning is, what's your name? How long you been in Bali? If you know or you someone talk, you talk to or you yourself is someone new to Bali, raise your hand, wave at me and Chloe in the back. We will hand you these welcome packages to congratulations to find the right home for you. Okay, and, and last question is, how do you do? Ooh, how do you do? Ah. Okay, let's play a game, huh? Let's play a game, huh? Okay. Um, okay, let's play a game, huh? Uh, stand up if you participated in the 21 days fasting and prayer. Stand up. Let's, let's just stand up. Show yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. How do you do? Ooh, how do you do after 21 days, huh? Okay. And stand up if there has been something changed to you in the past 21 days. Something changed. Ooh, great. And how do you do? How do you do? It, it says that it takes 21 days to create or break a habit. All right, so stand up if you have a habit formed or break or changed in the past 21 days. Is there anyone? Ooh, thank you. How do you do? How do you do? Huh? How do you do? How are you? How are you doing? How do you do? Okay, so for me, um, <clears throat> wow, past 21 days is more like a mission trip, 10 times of that. And, uh, and, and a lot of things changed to me. I also break my habit. Uh, some of you know that I love coffee, but I have been fasting from coffee for more than two weeks. Wow. Praise the Lord. And I had no desire for that. Even when my people sat next to me is drinking latte. <laughs> so praise the Lord because desire for coffee is less than a desire for him to me through 21 days. And so how do you do? The 21 days, many things can change. Many habits can happen. And prayer and fasting is, must be a big thing in your life. So look around, find someone that stand up and talk to them. See how do they do and how do you do? Okay, three, two, one, let's get connected.
All right, all right. I know, I know it's an exciting question, and we have to continue with our sermon today. So after service, there you can go out and buy food and bring to bring back to have lunch with us later. So you can still enjoy more fellowship after service. You can still enjoy service. Uh, you can still enjoy fellowship after service in the hallway to bring your lunch back. So next, please help me welcome Emmy to the stage for office and announcements. Hello. Good morning. It was nice. It's good to see all the all of strange faces. Well, welcome, welcome home. So this morning, I would like to share a passage. A passage from Revelation. <laughs> a passage from Revelation. It says, "The twenty-four elders fall down before Him who sits on the throne and worship Him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and said, 'You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory.'" And honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. So this morning I woke up with a song, worthy of it all, and we sing it a lot of times. We sing a lot of times. You are worthy of it all. And then there's a picture that coming to my head, and when. Twenty-four elders, they cast their crowns, and what they say is, "All the glory and honor and powers." So the crowns represent the glory, the honor, and the power they had on this earth. And then they see the presence of God, the glory of God on the throne. It's just like compared to my crown. Is nothing, and they realize all these I have. It's just, it's just because of God. They gave us a title in the in the earth, like whatever title you have, CEO, a teacher, and compared to God, there's nothing. There's nothing compared to the glory of God. So this morning we come before God, and when we're holding our tithe and offering, and we're so thankful that God gave us all the things, and we only need to return a little bit. He only asks of a little bit, but if we want to give Him more, it's because He's worth more than we. It's he worth more than we have. He's worth more. So this morning, let's bow and let's get our eyes closed. Lord, you are worthy of it all. For for from you are all things. And to you are all things, and you deserve all the glory. And and the tithe and offering we're holding on my hand, it's actually nothing compare compare what you have gave us. We're so thankful that we can able to. To see you face to face, we are able to encounter you in every little moment, and we are so thankful that we are able to live with you eternally. We thank you in Jesus' name. We pray, Amen. I would like to welcome, welcome team to come forward to collect today's tithe and offering. There's four way to give. When red bag comes to you, just simply put cash inside. And also, if you need tax receipt in the end of financial year, just raise up your hand and、uh, 
at Welcome Team will give you an envelope and so you can fill up the detail. And also if you need more time, there's a red box at the entrance. And last and easy is with the QR code. Just simply type your information and then, yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of ways to give on uh, with the QR code as well. So let's go into our announcement. Are you ready for today's announcement? We have lots, lots. You have to pay attention. So 21 days fast. This is, will be the last we, we announced. But it's go, today is the last day of fasting. Are you, are you ready? Are you, are you happy? <laughs> but I think it's going to be our lifestyle because we kind of get used to it. 21 days will form a habit, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but who, in, who went to a prayer meeting last night? Yeah, I see some of you. It was so good last night. And I encourage you to go, to be able to be there in person. Like the... In, the anointing was so great last night. We, it's not because we have great worship. It's because God's presence is over there and we cry so hard. You, like this morning I came inside and then somebody, why your voice sounds like that? Because I cry so much. But return to the first level. We cry because God asked us to return to the first level. But the main point is I encouraged you to go to the uh, last meeting of um, the 21 days fast. And then, second is, uh -uh, uh. oh, second is Good Friday Remembrance. So we are, it's almost mid, mid year already, 2024. So Easter is a very exciting day is that um, Jesus died for us. And also we like to remember what he has done us. So on Good Friday, we'll learn to meditate on what Jesus experienced on the way to the cross. As we know more of, about Christ's suffering and we will be understand how to live for the Lord in our daily life and forever. And on Good Friday, there will be worship as well. So we'll do meditation and also worship together. So come and join us on Friday. And we will have Easter Sunday celebration on the very last day of March. Uh, join us in celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. And uh, follow, following uh, the resurrection celebration, there will be Spanish fellowship as well so if you would like to experience the resurrection celebration in spanish way just come and join <laughs> and then they have to start preparing it um, but if you're willing to be part of it and willing to serve as well we, of course you can we welcome you as well okay on uh, number five so this month we have a lot of worship night. So we have different worship night. It's called Assemble. It's especially for missions. Um, it's going to be at Indonesian Berlin. It's at Nanjing campus. Um, it's a, and the worship night is all about mission. Like there's many many mission um, going this um, first half of the year. There will be people going to Kenya, Hungary, um, Taiwan, in different little towns, and Thailand. But we were sending out a mission and also pray for the country. Um, but if you have a heart for mission, come and join us on next Thursday. And number six, Hungary mission trip. <laughs> so if you ha have a heart for uh, mission going overseas, if you have a heart for for Roma people and also Budapest people and also um, Ukraine. If you have a passport uh, who is, is not ta from Taiwan, we welcome you to join us and we'll do a lot of evangelism 
on this trip because Pastor Chen in, from Victory will join us as well. So, yeah, we, we will see a lot of people will get healed and also get delivered. So if you really want to go and if you have financial problem, that's okay. Just come to see um, Pastor Mena or myself. And also, we're still looking for people. We need more people for, who, who have heart for Thailand, who went to Thailand before, who liked it. Not many people. So the rest of you should go and experience the Thai, Thai food or Thai, Thai uh, atmosphere. So I really encourage you to, to be, be part of it. Um, Pastor Menda is still looking for people. And if you're enjoying doing the uh, English summer camp, and if you are not an expert for it, that's okay. You can also join. So number, seven, uh, number eight, last is heaven, in, is our home conference. Let's work on the video first. Hello, my dear friends in Asia. It's been a long time. I want to invite you to Heaven in Our Home Conference on May 21st through 23rd in Taiwan, Taipei. Kingdom of Heaven is a family. It's governed by a family. We all have a father. We are his children. And we are learning to love one another. Uh, we're learning to put his glory and his nature on display. So I want to invite you to this conference. Uh, do everything that you can to absorb for the glory of God. Yes, so we've been praying a lot uh, for young people to rise up in Taiwan and also in the earth. And a lot of problem that have in the earth is because the fatherless earth. Uh, yeah, it's because the fatherless. And so we have the orphan minds that's caused a lot of problems. So we will be learning how to lay a good foundation in our home in order for our kids to be able to grow in kingdom culture. And then there's another video we want to see again. It relates to the conference. Hey guys, Seth Dahl here. I wanted to let you know that after the family conference there in Taipei on May 24th and 25th, we're gonna be doing a children's ministry workshop. This is for anyone who's already in children's ministry or may want to be in children's ministry because you have a heart for kids. Most of what church has to do is repair broken adults. But if we raise healthy kids, we don't have to do that. And so we're gonna be talking about raising healthy kids. We're gonna be talking about inviting and allowing God to do what he wants to do in children's ministry. We're gonna be talking about the difference between children's ministry and babysitting. You are gonna to want to be a part of this children's ministry workshop and I want to invite you to join us. If you got a heart for it and you're not involved yet, or you are involved, come join this workshop. So you, if you are a children's ministry teacher or you are a current teacher, uh, in the school, or you're interested to, to do children, or you're getting married and you're having a children, you are welcome to join this workshop. And today we are going to welcome Pastor Isaac to come on stage to, uh, to preach the God's Word today. Let's welcome. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad to be here. Uh, you know, when I was preparing to come on stage, I had a bit of a dilemma because I was kindly given a bottle of water, and then I had to decide, should I take up my coffee or my water? <laughs> and in the end, I'm sorry, I had to go for the coffee, you know? So for those of you who fasted coffee, you're very brave, but cheers. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just come before you. We just thank you for this day, Lord. Oh, Lord, what a joyous day. That's so beautiful. This is the day that you have made. And I just really pray 
as we listen to your word, would you speak to us, speak your truth to us, and let it just grow so deep in us that we would hold on to it, never forsake it. Thank you, Lord God. We praise you and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, I want to begin by sharing. Uh, you know, recently I, I've been getting into a certain type of uh, video on YouTube where they restore old things. I don't know if you've uh, seen this before. Uh, so, for example, one of the videos I love to watch, and I know it sounds strange, bear with me, is this guy who just takes old rugs and then he washes them. He professionally cleans them, you know, and you're just watching him clean the rug the whole time, which sounds really boring, right? You're like, why are you watching this? But it's kind of fascinating. It's almost like therapeutic as you watch him, watch him like just restore this dingy old rug into something beautiful, right? And there's this other video that I've seen before where this guy, he goes to the beach and he combs for all these uh, thrown away uh, Coke cans. And then he melts it down and then he creates art with it. I'm just like, wow, that's amazing. But, but one of the things that... Uh, I really love watching is uh, this thing. Uh, it's, a, it's a video about this Japanese practice called kintsugi. And if I can get this to work. Ugh. Next slide, please. Thank you very much. Okay, next slide. So legend has it that back in the 14th century, there was a ruler in Japan and he had this favorite tea bowl, but one day it broke. And so he said to himself, what should I do? Well, since it was made in China, so he sent it back to China to see if the craftsmen there could fix it. And when it came back, it came back like it is on the left, which I don't know if you can see it, but they stapled it together. <laughs> they literally, that's, uh, you know, it sounds funny, but that's, usually, that's how they repaired uh, broken teapot and pottery back then. They, they stapled it together, right, and sent it back to him. And of course, when he saw this, he was just like, what is this? <laughs> you know, I can't use it, and it looks horrible, right? <laughs> and so he's like, there must be a better solution to this. And, and so he said to his artisans, you know, you know, can you come up with a better solution to fix my favorite tea bowl? And that's where they developed this art form called kintsugi. It's this idea of transforming something that is broken, something that's in pieces, like you see on the right, and bringing it back together, repairing it in a way where it's even more beautiful than it was originally. And, and you know, this ruler specifically said, you know, I don't want you to cover up the brokenness, because the brokenness is what makes it unique, you know? And I want people to see the beauty in the brokenness, right? And, and I was just like, wow, that, that is so beautiful. I love that idea because, honestly, I see God doing the same thing in our lives. Amen? Like, I see the parallels of what God does in each and every one of our lives, right? Each one of us, in our journey through this thing called life. Uh, we get broken in different ways. We get scarred in different ways. A and sometimes the brokenness is so difficult on us that we wonder if we'll just be left in pieces. But you know what God's promise is? God's promise and, and his mission has always been to mend and to restore us into something that is greater than what we were before. Just like the idea of this kintsugi pottery. I mean, when we look at Jesus and his mission here on earth, we can clearly see that he was in the business of, and he still is in the business of restoring people. In Isaiah 61, when it talks about the mission of the Messiah, this is what it says. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is on me because the Lord has anointed me to do what? To bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Amen to that. Amen to that. 
we see in Jesus' mission, not only is he proclaiming the good news, restoration of our relationship with God the Father, but he's proclaiming that we can have healing, that we can be freed. And that makes us, that can make us into people more precious and more beautiful than we were before. Scars and all. And so today, I want, I want us to contemplate, take some time to just think about. You know, when we are in a place of brokenness or hurt or we're dealing with some kind of situation or issue, that we want Jesus to come and bring restoration or healing. What is required of us in order for Jesus to even enter and to work in our lives? Because I think there's some, what I call, minimum requirements. If we want to invite Jesus to come into our lives and to do some deep work, to do healing, to do restoration. There are some things we need to prepare. We need to prepare ourselves in a certain way with these minimum prerequisites before he can do that work of restoration. So today I want to look at a passage from the book of Mark. We're going to be in Mark chapter 9. So if, if you have your Bibles, you can turn there first. And uh, we're going to be reading from Mark chapter 9, verse uh, 14. And, but before we read, I want to just give you some context. Because it, it's such an interesting contrast. The, the context of this passage is that Jesus and his uh, three closest disciples, Peter, James, and John, they have just gone up the mountain and the, the three disciples have seen Jesus transfigured. They've seen Jesus in all his glory Right? And, and now they literally ex had a mountaintop experience, if you will. They're coming down the mountain into the valley. It's kind of ominous. But they, they, as they go down, they see a crowd of people arguing. There's commotion. And they're like, what's going on here? And, and that's where we pick up our story. Right? It says, when they came to the disciples, they saw a large crowd around them. And scribes disputing with them. When the whole crowd saw him, saw Jesus, they were amazed and ran to greet him. He asked them, what are you arguing with them about? Someone from the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought my son to you. He has a spirit that makes him unable to speak. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him down and he foams at the mouth, grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive it out, but they couldn't. He replied to them, you unbelieving generation, how long will I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring him to me. So they brought the boy to him. When the spirit saw him, it immediately threw the boy into convulsions. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening to him, Jesus asked his father. From childhood, he said. And many times they has thrown him into fire or water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. We're going to pause there. Jesus goes down, sees this commotion. He, he asks What's going on here? Why is everyone arguing? It looks like a mess. And then finally, someone steps out. It's this father. This father that's brought his demon-possessed son in hopes that Jesus could heal him. But when he comes to find Jesus, what does he find? Jesus is not there. It's his disciples that are there, right? Because Jesus went to the mountaintop with Peter, James, and John. And so probably a conversation ensues, we can imagine. If you read between the lines, right, it, it, probably the disciples are like, oh, you need a demon cast out of your boy? Sure, sure, we, we can do that. Because what happened previously? Jesus had commissioned the disciples to go and heal the sick and to cast out demons, 
And was that a success? Yes, it was. They got so excited. They're like, wow, Jesus, can you believe what we just did? We went out like you said, and we healed people. We cast out demons, right? So they must have been feeling like, oh, yeah, yeah, we got this. Like whatever Jesus gave to us, we, we can do this. And so that's probably what they tried to do. They're like, okay, okay, bring the boy over. We'll, we'll, we'll try to cast out the demon. And, and, you know, at first they try, right? You can, you can imagine this scene. That they're trying to cast out a demon, and then, but the demon doesn't come out. And then the disciples are probably looking at each other like, hey, what, what's going on? Dude, dude, it's not working. Why, why don't you try? Why don't you try? You know, and then, like, probably the next disciple is like, maybe we need to lay hands on him, you know? Lay hands on him, and then, like, that's not working, you know? And the other one's like, louder, louder, you know, in the name of Jesus. You know, it's not working, right? At this point, they're just, like, a little flustered and embarrassed. And, and it's like, probably the father's like, what's going on here? You know, what's going on here? And the scribes are probably laughing, like, I yeah, told you they were frauds. Right? And it's just not a good situation to be in. Right? At that point, there's, there's a lot of doubt in the crowd as to even whether Jesus is able to cast out this demon. Which is probably why the Father says, if you can do anything at all, even if it's just a little bit, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Now, before we come down so hard on the Father and everyone else, right, I, let's, let's put ourselves in the shoes of this Father. It says from childhood, from childhood, this son of his was dealing with this possession. He was suffering from a young age. Now, those of you who have parents, you know that it's hard enough already to take care of a quote-unquote normal kids, right? I don't know how you want to define that. I'm not going to go there. But it's, it's hard enough to take care of quote-unquote normal children already with, with all their tantrums and all that stuff, right? Not to mention there's some other parents right, that I've talked to, especially, you know, who, who have maybe kids that deal with like ADHD or autism or have special needs. And I've talked to friends of mine who have, who have kids that have special needs. And it's like an even heavier burden than normal, right? Not only do you have to deal with the issues that come with that diagnosis, but you have to deal with society, how society views you as a parent, how society views your child. They don't understand. They're just like, why is your child doing that? And you have to explain to them every time. It gets so tiring, right? But here's the thing. Even in those cases... At least, you know, there's like a support group you can go to. Maybe there's therapy that you can take your child to. Maybe there's a doctor's treatment. But what do you do when your child is demon-possessed? Is there a doctor you can bring them to? Like, like, like I don't, where do you even begin when your child is throwing themselves into fire and water trying to drown themselves? Like you bring it to the doctor, they're going, D don't, don't get near me, man. <laughs> like, I don't know how to deal with that. He tries to bring it to the rabbi, and the rabbi is probably just telling you, have you sinned? Confess your sin so God will forgive you and your child. Right? It's like you can imagine this dad over the years. He's been bringing his son to different people, trying to get healed. And it's just like one disappointment after another hopelessness starting to set in until one day he hears of this guy named Jesus he hears that hey you know he's been going around he's not only been sharing the truth of God but he's been he's been healing people he's been casting out demons from people in fact like you probably heard that recently there was this demon called Legion, like many demons in this dude, living in a graveyard, and, and he was able to cast them all out at once. You probably heard that story. He's just like, well, maybe he can do something for my son. Right? That, that's probably what the father is feeling in this moment. He just wants to have a little bit of hope that somebody can do something. 
for his son. And so when he brings him to Jesus and the disciples try casting out the demon and it doesn't work, how do you think he feels? Like he's probably thinking, oh no, the same thing's happening again. Oh no, is this, is this hopeless once again? Is this a dead end? Do I have to face the disappointment once again? And those thoughts are creeping into his mind. And that's like us sometimes. You know, maybe you can identify with what this father and son is going through. Right? What is it that you are experiencing today that, that you feel like, wow, I don't know if God can do this, if God can change things. It feels hopeless. Maybe it's something that, that you've been dealing with for a long time, like this father and son. And you're just like, I, I don't know how this situation would change. Maybe it's a hurt that you're dealing with, a sickness. Maybe it's an addiction that you're carrying. And you wonder, I don't know. I feel like I've tried everything. God, can you really help in this situation? That's tough. That's so tough. You know, we, uh, Grace and I, we have a, there's this older lady that we're friends with and we're really good friends with. And, you know, whenever we uh, talk with her, the, the conversation inevitably kind of veer, t- veers towards how she felt like she could never win her parents' approval and, and how to this day she still feels like her, her parents aren't able to express love to her. And it's like, it's one of these weird things where every time we're talking to her, it, it, somehow the conversation will go there. Right? Because this is what's on her heart. This is what she's been carrying for her whole life. And she's an older lady already. And every time we hear that, it just pains our heart. And we wonder, like, you know, if, if, if and we pray for her that, that the Lord would break her out of this cycle. The cycle that, that she is stuck in. That the Lord would bring deliverance. And that's so hard to hear. But, but some of us, that's what we are dealing with. The hurts of the past. Maybe, maybe like this older woman, it's, it's a, something your parents said. Maybe it's something you experience, like discrimination, betrayal of a friend. Maybe it's addiction. Alcohol, drugs, pornography, gambling. Maybe it's some kind of sickness that you're dealing with. Cancer diagnosis. Maybe it's a baby with a congenital defect. It could be you. It could be someone you know. But it's a difficult situation. Well, what is Jesus' response to the Father? And what, what, is his, what is he calling us to do? What does Jesus say? Jesus said to him, if you can do anything, if you can, everything is possible for the one who believes. You know, Jesus is basically (laughs) saying to this father, your question is the wrong question. It's not a question of whether I can or cannot. I can. I definitely can. That's the wrong question. The question is whether you believe I can. Are you willing to believe that I can change things in your life? That's the challenge Jesus had for this father. and That's the challenge that Jesus has for us. He's challenging us to have faith even when over and over we feel like things have not worked out the way that we want, that we have not been restored, that we have not been healed. Even when that happens, 
to have faith. Right? And I love this father's honesty. You know, how does he respond? Immediately, the father of the boy cried, I do believe. Help my unbelief. I do believe. Help my unbelief. How honest is that? He, he, he looks at himself and he realizes, oh, man, I, I, I got a little bit of faith. Probably not enough. So God help me. God help me to have more faith. And, and we look at that and we kind of like, well, that sounds kind of contradictory. But actually, do you, know, do you know the fact that he's praying, God help my unbelief? That's actually a prayer of faith too. That is a prayer of faith. You, you're believing that God can help you to increase your faith, to grow in your faith, right? So we can do that when we have doubts, when we know that we have unbelief. But, but brothers and sisters, here's the critical thing that I, I want to point out to us. We, we need to realize that a lot of times when we're dealing with issues in our lives, and the reason it's not changing, not all the time, but, but sometimes the reason is because we don't realize the amount of unbelief we have in our lives. We don't realize the amount of unbelief that is working in us. Because like this father, I think a lot of us, we have a mix. There's, I don't think there's any of us that's perfectly like 100% faith, yes. There's, there's going to, you know, we have a degree of faith. But if we're honest, we have a degree of unbelief too. And we need to recognize that. Because a lot of times that's the problem. There's unbelief working in our lives. And it's almost like we're blind to that. We're blind to it until God points it out to us or someone else points it out to us. Right? Oftentimes our unbelief is, only becomes visible when we're tested. That's probably why when you read the book of First Peter, chapter 1, verse 7, you know, he, he has this uh, famous quote, right, where he says, trials prove the character of your faith, right? And none of us want to go through trials, but that's one of the realities. When you go through a difficult situation, it proves the validity of your faith. You will know it, and God will know it. Sometimes that's what's needed. Other times we need someone to Point it out to us, right? We need someone to, to point it out to us because we cannot see. Maybe that's a, a mentor in our life. Maybe that's your spouse. You know, I appreciate my spouse. I appreciate Grace. She, she's always the one pointing out my unbelief, you know. I should, probably shouldn't admit that as a pastor. <laughs> We're being real here, right? It would be real here. Like, like often, because often what happens, you know, I'm, I'm the analytical type, so I'll overanalyze. Be like, here's my pros and cons, and then this happens. Like, I'm playing chess or something, you know, like thinking 10 moves out, right? And then at some point, you know, you could just feel my wife is just gives me this side look. And she's, she's just like, have you prayed recently? Did you, did you think about maybe bringing it to the Lord? You know, that, that's one of those moments where I say, oh, yeah, I was just getting to that. No, no, I wasn't. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you, wife. <laughs> right? And it's, it's kind of, sometimes it's those moments where I'm just like, yeah. Why is it that I'm depending so much on myself? Because, you know, a lot of times... There's a subtle form of unbelief, right? There's different types of unbelief. There's like the unbelief of the scribes. They just don't believe, right? They don't believe Jesus can, can heal or he's the Messiah, right? Then there's like unbelief like the Father. There's doubts. It's like, yeah, I, I want to believe him, but there's doubts. But then there's another type of unbelief. It's very subtle. It's the one where you're just like, oh, I think I can do this on my own. I got this, right? And... and you might be asking, well, how is that unbelief? Well, you know, it's very subtle because when you start trusting in yourself, depending on yourself, what you're basically saying is you're either saying, well, you know, this thing is probably too small for God to care. Or maybe God doesn't care about this at all. Or maybe, I don't know, God 
doesn't want to bother. Right? There's all these things that we say to ourselves to convince ourselves, we, we got this. I can handle it. And that's like a very subtle form of unbelief that we sometimes have in our day-to-day lives. Right? And God is challenging us. You know, whether you have doubts, whether you have subtle unbelief, to identify that unbelief, that lack of faith, and to bring it to Him. Right? To bring it to Him and say, Lord, I don't have this figure it out. You know, I don't have all the solutions. You know, Lord, I have doubt about this. Can you help me to overcome my doubts? Right? That's, that's kind of the first requisite, re- realizing the unbelief in our lives and dealing with that by bringing it to the Lord. We need to be able to do that. And so that's what the Father does, right? He comes to the Lord and he just, in this honest moment, he's just like, Lord, help my unbelief. I, I really want to believe you. And so the story goes... That Jesus, you know, he saw the crowd was quickly gathering and he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, you mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. Then he came out, shrieking and throwing him into a terrible convulsion. The boy came, uh, became like a corpse, so that many said, he is dead. But Jesus, taking him by the hand, raised him and he stood up. I love that resurrection kind of imagery. He was dead, but now he's alive. After that, what happens? It says, after everyone went away, something, an interesting conversation, an epilogue to the story. A conversation takes place, you know. It says, after he had gone into the house, his disciples asked him privately. Of course, they wouldn't do it publicly. They don't want to embarrass themselves. How come we couldn't drive it out? Yeah. (laughs) And he told them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer. Nothing but prayer. Now, I'll be honest with you. Uh, Many theologians have puzzled over this statement Because it kind of comes out of the blue, right? It's puzzling because up until this point, what have we been talking about the whole time? Faith, the need for faith, right? Never in the Bible does, you know, do we see Jesus tell his disciples, now before you go and cast out a demon, pray first, right? He just sends them out. Right? There's, there's certainly, there's a couple of times where we see Jesus pray before he heals. But, but even this time, when he was casting out the demon, he just said, come out. He didn't pray first. Right? And so a lot of people are just like, okay, where, where is this coming from? Well, I think there's this statement that Jesus makes at the very beginning of the story. I wonder if some of you were noticing that. In verse 19, that kind of sheds light on this. So I have to go like all the way back to verse 19, right? Wait, 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 wait. Here, here, here. It, it's, it's interesting that one of the first things Jesus says when the Father tells him the situation is <laughs> he kind of gives this statement, right? You unbelieving generation, how long will I be with you? How long must I put up with you? It's hard for me to read that the right way without it sounding like anger. You know? <laughs> like, okay, let me, let me try. <sighs> ah, you unbelieving generation. How long will I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Okay, that sounds a little better. Right? I think when you read this, a lot of times you're, you're just like, well, is Jesus like just angry and annoyed with these people, you know? <laughs> Right? He, it sounds like he's venting, but he's actually not. He's, he's lamenting. There's a difference. Right? Venting is when you're angry, you go to your coworker. Oh, do you know what the boss told me to do? Oh, I'm so angry. But I can't do anything about it, so I'm just venting to you. Right? Lamenting comes from a place of love. You know, when you see your son go off on the wrong path, you lament. You're like, oh, 
my son, I, I, I just wish you would listen to me because I care about you deeply. I love you. Right? This, this statement is a lament. It's a lament about the fact that Jesus is like, you know, I've been amongst you all for so long. I'm about to die on the cross. Right? How long has it been? Three years? You know? And, and there's still so much unbelief. And you know what happens when there's unbelief? Jesus can't operate. It's not about Jesus' ability to do something. It's not about God's ability. Can God do? Of course he can. But you'll notice there's a previous story where Jesus went back to his hometown in Nazareth. And he was uh, preaching to the townspeople. And when the townspeople realized, wait a minute, this Jesus, isn't he the illegitimate son of Mary? We know this guy. How dare he? And they felt insulted that Jesus would dare to preach to them. And, and you know what it says at the end of that story, it says that Jesus couldn't do a lot of miracles because of the unbelief of the people. He could not operate, bring about healing and restoration because the people's hearts were hard. They did not believe. And I think this is what it's pointing to, right? He's like, how much God desires and loves us. He wants to bring restoration, but... Oh, he laments when we don't believe that he is able to. Right? When we put our faith and trust on something else. Now, this statement, people wonder, who, who is Jesus talking to, right? It seems a very open-ended statement. Was he talking to the scribes that were there? Was he talking to this father that was telling him about the situation? Or was he talking about... The disciples, or what was he talking about? Everyone. And I, I think the most natural way to read this is that he was talking about everyone because all of them had unbelief issues. Right? But specifically, when we look at the disciples, what was their unbelief? What was their problem? Precisely that they thought they got it. They were like, thinking, I got it. We can cast out this demon, right, on our own power. They were depending on themselves. They thought, oh, we've done it before. We can do it again. And so they became so confident in their own ability to handle things that they neglected God in the process. And when that happens, oh, we need to get on our knees and repent before the Lord. And just to tell God, oh, God, I'm so sorry that I, I thought somehow I could just handle everything on my own without inviting you into the process. You know, and when we do that, God sees that. I bet you God will act. One of my favorite verses. Wait, wait, go back, go back. Because, yes. One of my favorite verses is this verse in Second Chronicles. Chapter 7, verse 14. I just, every time I go back to this verse, it just so resonates with me. Right? Jesus, like God is speaking to his chosen people, the Israelites. And, you know, he says, If my people who are called by my name, are you all called by his name? Yes. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Meaning, I can't do it. God, you need to do it. Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and what? I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. A beautiful, beautiful promise of the Lord. So that's why as as we close, I want to issue a challenge. Now, you know, we've been talking about this 21-day fast for Taiwan, and I saw some of you on stage. You were so happy. Yes, it's over. I'm about to ruin your party. Sorry, because I'm about to issue another challenge, a seven-day challenge, <laughs> especially to those of you who didn't stand up and participate. I'm not guilt tripping you into this. Maybe I am. No, okay. 
just to say, you know, it's so fascinating that you, uh, this 21-day challenge was, uh, you know, prayer movement was happening because traditionally 40 days before Easter, there's this thing called Lent. It's also a time of prayer and fasting, right? It's not just the Catholic church that does it. You know, a lot of churches participate in this. And, and so I, I thought it fitting that since we have seven days before Easter Sunday, you know, challenge yourself to do a, a time of prayer and if you want fasting as well, challenge yourself every day to, to go into a time of deep prayer. You know, maybe for you, your prayer time with God is five minutes. Okay, I, I'm not telling you to like do one hour all of a sudden, right? Just challenge yourself. Okay, can I do 15 minutes? Just going deep with the Lord. You know, bringing to the Lord my issues, anything, even my doubts. Right? Challenge yourself. Examine yourself. What are the areas of unbelief that I need to repent and come before the Lord so that He can renew me? Right? It's, you can think about fasting as well. It doesn't have to be just food. I know a lot of people, they do like a media fast. Right? Maybe social media is just taking over too much of your time. You're constantly looking to see what your friends are doing and getting all jealous over them. You know? <laughs> and like all unhinged. Like, what? They went to that party. How come I wasn't invited? You know, that kind of stuff. And that's just like not healthy, right? And maybe you just need to fast from that and be like, okay, Lord, help me to center myself upon you. Because my identity isn't found in how many friends invite me out. How many photos and thumbs up I get, you know. It's found in you. Right? Help me to refocus on that. Right? Take this time to be a time. Maybe you've been dealing with that issue like the Father. It's been going on. This problem that, that doesn't seem to go away. That seems hopeless. Just dig in. On your knees. Spend that time just wrestling in prayer with the Lord. I guarantee you, you, God will change you. God will change you. It might not be in the way that you think, because oftentimes we go into prayer thinking that we want God to do a certain thing a certain way. But it may not be. Right? I, I just remember this one time. I just want to share this. I had a huge fallout with a coworker, you know, it, and it was a huge disagreement. And you know, at that point, I was just like, I was frustrated. I was just like, why is this person like this? You know, and and I th I think it was a very natural thing to go to the Lord and be like, oh dear Lord, would you change this person? Right? Because that's what we usually think, right? Yeah, amen. Change that person. It's their problem, not my problem, right? Look at how they treated me. And, and you know, as I prayed, what I realized was like, wait a minute. I don't think God is changing them. I think God was changing me. I was just like, well, what's going on here? Like, they, they haven't changed. But you know what God was telling me? It's like, you, you know, maybe you need to look at this coworker in a different way. Maybe you need to see him, maybe with the eyes of compassion. Uh, maybe you need to, like, just, why don't you try hanging out with him? And just, like, well, I don't want to say have a beer with him. That's not what I did. I, I brought uh, uh, Martinelli's sparkling cider, okay? Right? And, and, and we had a glass and talked. Because he was surprised. He was just, I literally, on a Sunday, I went over to his house and just, like, rang on the bell. He's like, what, what are you doing here? And I had this uh, cooler with the drinks. <laughs> you know, I was just like, hey, I just want to hang out with you and let's have a talk. You know, and he was just like, uh, okay, <laughs> right? Because when your pastor goes up to your house, right, with dr some drinks, you know, and <laughs> you just had an argument with him, it's just kind of a weird thing, you know? <laughs> it's a weird moment. But, but man, God brought restoration through that. Not what I expected. But a lot of times... That's what God is, is about. 
restoration doesn't necessarily come the way that you think it wants to come, right? But we need to pray in faith, coming to the Lord, dealing with our unbelief, for God to move in our life. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, as we pray and as we worship, let the Lord minister to you. But let this be your time to go to the Lord to seek Him. Lord, we just confess we are weak in so many ways. In so many ways we depend on ourselves. There is unbelief in us. There is doubt in us. We might not admit it. We might not even see it. But Lord, in this time right now, help us to confess it to you. And let's just lay, just want us all to lay every burden at your feet, every doubt, every struggle that we've been dealing with. To ask you to help us believe that there is hope, there's restoration in you. Especially when we think of Easter, when we think of the cross and what you've done, you've done the greatest thing imaginable. You've saved us from our sins. You've restored our relationship with the Heavenly Father. If you're able to do that, you can do all things to restore us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't we, why don't we rise to our feet right now and just use this song to uh, respond to what the Lord has been saying to you through Pastor Isaac's message today. That we would humble ourselves and call upon the name of the Lord that we would seek His face and let Him continue to speak to you again. Let's sing this song together.
Tears will cry, this voice will say that it is your breath that causes us to breathe. You've given us life, not only physical life, but life eternal. And so Lord, we just ask that you would cause and change our unbelief, Lord. Bring us into a new level of faith for what you're wanting to do in each of our lives. Lord, that we would humble ourselves. We would call to you, cry out to you, seek your faith that you would turn your face towards us. Not only would you heal this land, but you would heal our lives. So Lord, we ask just in this next season that the level of faith would increase, Lord, in each and every one represented here, Lord. Faith for breakthrough, a new level, a new level, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So as we continue into this holy week, speak to us afresh, each one of us, that each day as we move closer and closer towards Good Friday and Easter, remembering your sacrifice, remember that you rose again three days later. Cause us to seek you with a new hunger and a new thirst. We thank you. We thank you that you do not leave us in our unbelief, but that you come towards us and you want to see. You want to see us. You want to meet us face to face. We thank you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you as you go into the rest of your day. Uh, we also have our prayer team over here ready to pray for you. 
If you really want to press in and pray with one another as brothers and sisters in Christ and seek breakthrough. And we also have a time to continue fellowshipping out in our fellowship hall. And if you're staying with us for the Connect Lunch, we also meet outside in the fellowship hall. God bless you and have a great week.
Oscar.